Welcome to another day with the Wildernesses. It's mornings like this that made the journey worth it. Getting here with my wife and family, sitting on the deck, drinking coffee and watching the sunrise coming over the remote mountains. And my little friend Oscar, the weasel in his winter coat, joining me making this another amazing day in Alaska. This would be a lot more interesting if I did it on the counter, but... It's on, so I, whatever. Yeah, no, I don't like to do it that way because then I end up with too much flour on it. The only thing is I did not have any more whole wheat flour, so this is just white flour and flax. I'm sure this crew won't mind. Use flax seed for that? No, I use the ground flax. The ground flax? Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of using up all the milk. It actually tastes good, but mine just tastes like sugar water so far, so I don't know what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I just stick it in the oven overnight without turning the oven on. That's what I'm talking about. So how long will it be? So um, 30 minutes, and then I usually do an extra five just to make sure it's hollow and no, not dewy. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. First piece. <laughs> Next one is for you. So this is a real typical looking kind of timber that we cut our logs out of. This is tundra. It's about a foot thick of tundra and then there's soil underneath it and then typically uh, permafrost underneath that. These trees don't get very tall. They get you know anywhere from 10 to 30 feet tall and it takes many, many years for them to even grow that because the ground is so cold. They don't have much nutrition and it's so cold that they don't uh, grow very big. But there's a lot of standing dead uh, for 
hundreds of miles just like this in some of this uh, area. And uh, so we're able to cut the standing dead out of these trees, and it works real good. They're about the right diameter for burning and uh, takes care of uh, our wood needs here. Now that we got the logs cut and then we uh, pull them with a four-wheeler to one central location from the different places we're cutting wood at and then we get the log cutting stand that we made, Micah and I made a number of many years ago to stack the wood on so we can cut it efficiently and this way it gets it off the ground, it makes it e easier to cut multiple logs all the same length and we're cutting 20 inch pieces that go into the stove and so this allows that to really work out well and um, efficient as you're going to see. So once we get the logs put up on the log rack, uh, it gets pretty easy to cut them all up. And uh, we just like this system. It's pretty efficient to keep things uh, clean, cleaner when we're cutting them as well, especially with the smaller dimension logs like we have. These are black spruce standing dead that we cut, so they still have a lot of bark on them, which is one disadvantage. Using these uh, for firewood, you do get a little bit more ash. So you got to put out, uh, take the ashes out of the wood burner more often. But these are all about the right diameter to use, so we don't have to cut near as much uh, uh, or split as much wood as we normally would have if it would be the, the bigger rounds. And we have other bigger rounds too, but uh, we do get a lot of this smaller stuff that is pretty efficient because it grows under stress and and um, slowly it seems to have a lot of BTUs in it uh, it heats very very well I've been real happy with that and and we have a lot of it it's easy uh, relatively easy to get to compared to other things and um, it's been working good for us for, for quite a while so we'll get this all cut up and uh, this this pile of wood here that I'm cutting up will, will give me about two full trailer fulls and uh, then once I uh, get a cut loaded and brought back to the lodge, we stack them up for the next go around on this.
Now that I got firewood stacked up against the, the wall on the one end of the lodge, I need to put some vertical poles in to hold my next row of cut firewood in place so that it uh, stacks up nice and neat. And so what I've done here is I went out into the uh, bush and got some birch logs and I'm cutting those. Uh, we're going to cut those to length now and put them in and to support the ends of the stack of cordwood we're going to be putting in here shortly. Once cut the length, then we can uh, dig a hole there and put one end of the log in the ground and the other one braced up on the rafters and uh, screwed into place and that'll hold the end of the stack of uh, cordwood here and we'll do that on the uh, front side here as well shortly. So now I'm ready to install the last log, uh, vertical birch log, holding the end of the stack firewood there. And uh, I'm going to put it in the hole and then the top will screw into a cross member on the rafter up above there. As you can see, I do have a night light there that works out really good during the winter time. We get some pretty uh, long nights here and it's nice to have anytime we walk out there, the light will come on so we don't stumble and fall and uh, works out real good during the winter time. Our friend is coming to visit us. And the only way. 
ways you can get here is by air or by boat. the lake down the lake there's a guide does some guiding and he actually does some commercial helicopter work too so he's brought me over here sometimes when I haven't been able to get across because of the weather or whatever because there's no way to get here unless you fly or take a boat that's a real nice way of doing it so beautiful night tonight for Holland Woods setting up <laughs> 